What is up, TC family? And we are starting a commentary on our series, Jesus is Greater Than Religion. It's kind of coming in between our Christmas series. And so stay tuned as we're just going to break through or break down the sermon that Pastor Alex had shared, and uh, we'll go through it together. So here we go. Break it down. See, if you grew up in a religious atmosphere, you understand that religion is actually quite small. Religion, you can kind of put it in a box or put it in a compartment of your mind or your life, and it stays nice and tidy there in its like zone, in its religious box. But Jesus is big. Jesus oversaturates, consumes, and overwhelms every area of your life. We can't list Jesus as a priority of everything else, like uh, Jesus, work, family, marriage. I don't know. We can't do that because Jesus works in and through all the different areas of our lives. We weren't created for compartments. We were created for healthy, holistic living. And that's really the heart behind this series is so we all get on the same page that we are not called to religion, but we are called to relationship with Jesus Christ. So the thing I was thinking of when, when I was really like meditating on this one point of the message was how it's almost like a warning sign in your life. If you start separating and compartmentalizing, like, oh, no, 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 like, this is business. Or, no, 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 this has nothing to do with ministry. This is something else. Or, no, 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 bro, like, I keep my, my, my faith life and my this life separate. Whenever you start doing that, that's like a telltale sign that you really aren't living with any true spirituality or relationship. You're living in religion, yeah. right? You're kind of creating a, like I said, like a box for God to fit in. And you're like, no, God, this is where you live and everything else I control, everything else belongs to me and everything else I want to, like, I want to keep it separate. Yeah. Um, you know what it makes me feel? Uh, <laughs> um, sometimes, <laughs> you know, in movies sometimes when there'll be like a kid that'll be like, like a sixth grade kid and he'll be like, yeah, I have a girlfriend, but she lives in Canada. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like a fake girlfriend, but like, yeah. I don't know, maybe it is real. I don't yeah. know. But it's like, I just remember being a kid and like when you, when your friends would try to like lie about having a girlfriend, right? It's like, no, no, I totally have a girlfriend. Yeah, 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 but like, yeah. no one knows who she is. Yeah, 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 she's yeah. never met anybody's friends. Uh-huh. Like, it's like, it's like, bro, where's your girlfriend? It's like, uh, she, she's busy tonight, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we do that with Jesus. Like, yeah. it's like, he's like really special to us and we love him and we, yeah. we sing worship songs, but then we like keep him separate from everything else. Yeah. And it's like, is he even real, bro? Like, yeah. like, you know, I don't yeah. know, bro. It's, it's. No, it's so good. And I think it's so interesting. I think, I mean, we won't, we won't go too deep into it, but I think when you t- you're tackling a, a thought here that Jesus isn't religion. Yeah. Which, and it's like, I think a lot of people nowadays still picture Jesus in it's this is my religion right but i love the way that you broke it down and you're saying like we can't compartmentalize jesus to just this moment or just a sunday or just this fraction of our dates like i think if um if you think about other religions they all have their different rituals and how to connect with their their sense of god yeah but then the the interesting thing about jesus is that jesus doesn't wait on this other connection point Mm -hmm. he is like he's there with us before the connection point even started yeah and so i think what's so I think it's interesting because I think a lot of people, they wouldn't see religion in that way or they wouldn't see Jesus in that way. They would see Jesus as someone that, you know, they are just, um, yeah, he's just someone that you connect with on a Sunday or a weekday. And I'm sure that people, you know, some people that watch this, maybe they've seen things like Jesus is greater than religion or Jesus isn't religion. But I think people still have that religious mindset attached to the person of Jesus, yeah. that Jesus just gets my Sunday morning. Jesus just gets my Friday after I'm going to sleep. Jesus just gets my Thursday before I eat my food, yeah. you know? And, but I think I, lo- I love how you're entering the sermon going into how Jesus he really, he's not these compartments. He's, he's the circle. He, or he's, the, he's the whole circle and he's in the middle of the circle. And he kind of spreads throughout, you know, all of our life. And I think, honestly, like, to be truthful, because I, when I first came to faith, like, I didn't get this. Yeah. So I think religion and, and working within the parameters of religion are maybe, for a lot of us, part of our faith journey. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's how we learn to trust God. Like, oh, I'm going to trust God with this little portion of my life. And as I continue to grow and mature, I trust him with more and more. Yeah. And I go to him and I, and I, and I, and I not trust, but I, I have relationship with him in all the different areas of my life, yeah. you know, because 
I think that, so, okay, so for instance, I remember the day when I was in university and my mom called me out because I called her and I was like, hey mom, I need money for my phone bill. Yeah. Uh, and she was like, Alex, I really feel like the only time you call me is when you need something. Mm. And the funny thing is, is I've talked to so many parents that say that to me. They'll be like, oh, my kids, the only time they ever call me is when they need something. I feel like it happens with sons a lot. Yeah. I'll talk to a lot of moms and they yeah. say about their sons that are in uni or that are like, in school or whatever, and they're like, oh, he only calls when he needs money. He only calls when this or that. He only, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that's an immature way of managing a relationship. Yeah. But then when I, uh, as I have grown up, now I really don't have any expectation yeah. from my mom that what she's going to do for me necessarily. Uh -huh. But I, I call her to invest in the relationship, to show her that I love her, yeah. Because yeah. to hear her about her day or her week or whatever, or to let her talk to my kids, you know, hey, mom, you want to talk to the grandkids? You know what I mean? And it becomes a much different way of relating to her. Yeah. And I think that that really is kind of like what it tends to look like with us as we grow in faith. Yeah. At first, I think God's okay with us just coming to him when we need things. Yeah. It's like, okay, God, I need you to make me feel good. I need you to give me peace about this hardship. I need this. I need that. But eventually, I think we have to mature past religion yes. and grow to the point where it's like, no, God, like I want to have a relationship with you because you are good. Yeah. And I understand in healthy relationships that you have expectations on me. Mm. I have expectations on you. And we both are managing those expectations. And mm. I am committed to you. I'm committed not only when things are comfortable and easy, but I'm committed always, yeah. right? Um, and the reason why I'm able to commit to you is because you've been so committed to me. Yeah. I think it really, the shape of it changes as we mature. Yeah, that's so good. That's really yeah. Good. They settled for a system that they bought into that where they were absolutely deceived by because we know that religion and idols have no power, but they settled for something like that so they could receive some sort of like, affirmation or, or, or temporary peace. It's like that effect when they give people the, the fake medicine. What's that called? You know, it's like when it's not real medicine, but they give them the fake medicine and the fake medicine works because it's all in your mind. I forget what it's called. You can put it in the comments below, but it's like, it's like it was all in their head. They were buying into this idea because at least an idea that they created, that they bought into, that was made by their hands, at least they had a bit more control or say of what it looks like. So they created this golden calf to worship. They created this golden calf to bring offerings to. They were taking their finances, they were taking their, their goods and they were bringing it, offering it to this thing that they made, hoping that it would do for them what only God would do. Have we ever found ourselves making personal sacrifices in the name of religion, hoping that it will do something for us that only God can do? crazy how we can get so mixed up. You know, what's so crazy is even before this, there was a section of the scripture where in the chapter right before this, it tells a story about how God had given gifts and power from his own spirit to teach his people, Israel, how to make uh, silver and bronze and gold and how to shape these metals and fashion these metals almost like a blacksmith. So he sat there and gave them these gifts. And what did they use with their gifts? They used their gifts to build something of worship that they were more comfortable with instead of trusting God in discomfort. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Do, you ever, do you ever watch your videos sometimes and think, wow, that was a really good point? I say that to Janae all the time. <laughs> like, I'll be like, babe, watch this part. And she's like, Alex, like, I'm married to you. I'm like, no, no, no. And she'll, yeah, be like, like, she'll be like, this is what she'll say. She'll be like, you're so ridiculous. Like, you, you just, like, are watching yourself. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not me. Myself. It's like the Holy Spirit, yeah. like, working through me. And yeah. I'm always just so impressed because it's like, yeah. like, I'm not that sharp to be able to, but, like, the Holy Spirit is, like, speaking and communicating and working, but. Yeah, I because because I, I I was watching this right, and I was like, I was like, this is such a good point because I think, and I'll just use my life for example, yeah. right? So in my life, I think I'm 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 in this place where when you're between the ages of babyhood as a guy, you know, yeah. babyhood to like twenties. Yeah, I love those language babyhood. Yeah, is that, that like a, I don't even know. <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe I shouldn't even use babyhood. Maybe I should use probably like teenagerhood. In, infant, infant, infanthood. Infant yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Baby, I don't know. <laughs> babyhood. I don't know what you call that. Uh, yeah. Puppies. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, 
<laughs> but like, okay, maybe not babyhood because you know. You're no, it's okay. Now. Babyhood. Go for but, babyhood. Uh, babyhood. So babyhood, essentially, just when you're growing up until around your like mid twenties, yeah. uh, R- Richard Rohr kind of calls it like, like the first half of your life. Yeah. And it's and it's this part of your life where where internally, just as a guy, I don't know about ladies, but as a guy, yeah. there's just something you're yearning for, and you're yearning for something deeper something bigger, something bigger than yourself, and that sense of sacrifice that guys just try to go through just to make it to whatever their image or destination is, yeah. it's it's something that every guy kind of goes with or goes yeah. through. And I think, you know, even for me, I think I've processed that. And I've processed what, or I'm in the middle of processing. I'm not, I haven't processed it, but I'm in the middle of processing. Well, what does that look like for me? Because I think, you know, when I was, when I was maybe 18 and 19, I think I had this image in my head about ministry, about yeah. Jesus, about church. And then I, I fought, I felt like I fought so hard to try to get there or get on the path to get there. Yeah. And what's crazy is that, you know, if I look at my life now, maybe, maybe I could consider myself part of that path already or there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then the crazy thing is that like, it's, it's, you know, I face the reality that I just don't feel this, whatever satisfaction I think I was trying to find. Yeah. And, and it's like, when I look through that, those last like couple of years of my life, it's like, I think I mixed up Jesus and ambition. And I think ambition became the idol of Jesus, over Jesus in my life. Yeah. And Jesus was just part of the car. Yeah. He was saying, okay, if you want to make this your ambition, I'm going to go with you. Yeah. And I think what's so good about what you were saying in, in, um, in, in, that your little, in that clip there, you know, I love, especially when you're talking about how like these people, like they were given, God taught them this beautiful gift of like creating yeah. gold, creating silver, creating these things. Yeah. And and how those things are good things. Uh-huh. That none of this is bad. In fact, anything in our life isn't isn't necessarily bad. Yeah. But it's just it's crazy how those things, like what you said in the clip, they can take the place of creator because we try to find validation and security in how we've made it through this this situation than than Jesus and what he he could do for us and he can do in us, you yeah. know? And and so I think that's that's something that, you know, when you were talking, I think I just yeah, I just took so much from that. I was like, oh, that's a, what a great, what a great point that the Holy Spirit spoke through you for people. Because I think people, people's idol or people's religion can actually be a lot of things. Yeah. You know, I, I think people's religion can be broken down through, um, and maybe it'll be on like a different clip because we, we heard yeah. it in the sermon, but um, like people's religion, it can be how they've worked through their marriage. You know, I was talking to a friend, friend of mine's mom, and her thing is like, uh, her thing is like, oh, well, we've been married for 25 years. Yeah. But then oftentimes when I hear of them fighting, it's like, I've given up so much for this marriage. Exactly. I've given up so much. Yeah. I've been such a good wife. Why do I treat it like yeah, this? That's so I've toxic. been together for 25 years. Yeah. It's all because of, of me, you know? Yeah, it's like everything her, I sacrificed. Right? It's her security is her sacrifice. Her identity yeah. is her sacrifice. Yeah. It's not It's not the identity of Jesus and how he's worked through their marriage, you yeah. know? It's and, and so it's stuff like that. Like, I think a lot of things can be people's security and in turn become the religion. Yeah. And not Jesus. Yeah, that's like, that's so ugly. Yeah. Uh, because it is so self-centered. Yeah. Um, and in that, in that, in that scripture, it, it's, it's crazy. Literally, eight verses before, uh, he gave them the ability to craft metal and steel and gold and bronze or whatever. Yeah. And then eight verses later, they're frustrated with God. So they use the gifts from God to craft a replacement God. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it's like, you know what I always think, right? Like, I always think, well, actually, never mind. I, I'm not going to say that's inappropriate. But what I will say is that this is how you know when you're not doing that. Yeah. Whenever you're using God's gifts and you don't have an expectation of how the return of the use of your gifts will come back to you, mm. how to make you feel a certain way, to add to your financial security, whatever. When you don't have that expectation, that means you're using God's gifts for him and not you. Yeah. Um, and th- this morning, like I got in a little bit of a, uh, argument with Janae and I was riding, I was so irritated and cause like, that's what happens when you're married. Right. Um, and I was on my way home after dropping off the kids and I was just thinking like, I'm so freaking irritated. But then I thought to myself, you know what, Alex, like just get over yourself and buy some flowers for her on the way home. Yeah. And then in my head, I was like, well, will flowers even do anything? Yeah. Will flowers even change her attitude? Like yeah. if I buy her flowers, is she even going to be like, you know what, babe, this is so sweet. And I was like, I don't know if it'll do anything. Yeah. And then it was like, almost like that revelation of like, you shouldn't do it yeah. Yeah. to do something. That's right. You should just do it to be kind totally. as an offering and just say, hey, I love you. This is for you. Yeah. Right. And that's the difference. Yeah. Like I have zero expectations that she's going to see these flowers and be like, wow, babe, yeah. I'm so sorry. I was mean or whatever. You know what I mean? Because that's, 
building something for me. Yes. That's using whatever I have, my resource, my gift, my talent to make me feel a certain way. Yeah. Versus taking whatever I've been given by God and giving it as an offering totally. with no expectation of return. That's right. And I think that that's the difference. Mm-hmm. So the heart check would be, am I using God's gifts to make me feel better yeah. or to give it as an offering yeah. right. with no expectation, yeah. right? And that's really really tough. Because I think a lot of us say that we're doing things for God, especially in marriage, like you said. Mm -hmm. Like I'm being a good husband for Jesus. I'm being a good wife for Jesus. But at the end of the day, we're really doing it so our lives are more comfortable, so we'll feel better, so we'll feel nicer, so we'll feel more loved, we'll feel more affirmed, or we'll feel more justified. Like, look at what I've done. You know what I mean? And that's that's so religious. And he instructed us to follow suit. But the only difference is, is when God rested on the seventh day, he rested from his work to acknowledge the goodness of his work. When God called us to take a Sabbath, which he called Israel to take a Sabbath, he said, I want you to rest on the seventh day from your work to acknowledge my work. See, what God was showing us is that on the seventh day, we were to hit reset and realize that it didn't matter how much we worked, how much we sacrificed. Our work and our sacrifice was never going to be as good as God's work and sacrifice. So on the seventh day, we're called to surrender, to rest and reset and realize that it's all about his work. That our faith isn't self-centered, that our faith is Christ-centered, that we're not trying to promote our own ideals onto God, that we're not trying to leverage God or put God in a corner, say, you will work on my terms when I say, but we will trust that God's perfect work, even though we don't see it and we don't know when it's happening, that we trust that it's perfect and it's the best thing for us. So before, before this clip, you know, you, I thought you brought up a great point. You brought up how what's so interesting about Jesus, or well, I mean, I'll just use God, but in, in, that, in that chapter of Exodus, it's like he gives us the tools to create things. But then humankind doesn't create it for God. They create their own gods. Yeah. But then, then, he, then Jesus gives us the Sabbath after. You yeah. know? Right and in between those two right sections. Those two he people. gave them the gifts to create. Yeah. He reminded them yeah. of the Sabbath yes. and the importance. And then yeah. what did they do? They created, they created something, for, something themselves for themselves instead of for God. Yeah. That's it, right? And I think it's, so, I, I think it's such a I, – I love that you broke that down because I think, you know, for, for us, something I always think about is how – a lot of the things that we do or have, maybe it's not, it's not necessarily bad. You know, maybe my idea of what ministry looked like wasn't necessarily bad, even though some of it could have been self-centered and, and overly ambitious, but also some of it could have been attached to, I, I'm just dreaming that Jesus can do a really big thing. Yeah. And this is what I can picture being a part of. Yeah, or this, right. is, this is just scratching the surface and God could do more. Right. Look at all the people that could come to know Jesus. Yeah. Right? And, and I think something like ambition and drive, that's like a beautiful gift. Yeah. You know, something like an ability to break down something strategically and, and find loopholes and the, I don't know, and the, uh, I was going to be like the, uh, like the stock trading market. I don't know. Like if you're able to do that really well, yeah. like all those things, the, things like that, like they're not bad things. It, it's just, you know, and I love that. I think, I think the beautiful thing about bringing in the Sabbath in that moment is that the Sabbath, it, like we said, it's like a restart, mm-hmm. but it's like that restart where it's like every time, if we have one place in our lives in the week where we can just stop and reflect and remember that, man, God gave me this gift. Yeah. God had put this, this idea, this, the way I communicate, the way my strengths are, the way these things are, mm-hmm. the way I can work through problems, the way I can navigate things relationally, the way that I can brainstorm and you know, all those things. Like God gave me this gift and I want to use it in, in whatever I'm doing right now. Like I want to use it to to kind of just serve Jesus and and just be the best version of me through to this. do something great. Yeah, to do something great, and because uh, because when I hear this, it's like you know I think I think some a thought that came to mind. This is me kind of rambling, but a yeah. thought that came to my mind when I was hearing this is like it's like some people will find their validation and their and their identity in how hard they work yeah. in their job and profession and the career and how far they've climbed. But then we can't discredit hard work because I mean we both you and I both love hard workers. Yeah. People that work hard and work smart are like amazing, yeah. you know? So, so yeah. obviously there's this middle ground of like, so we, ha- we have people with these beautiful gifts that are they're incredibly talented and skilled and things that they've done. But I think the Sabbath is a great 
reminder that it's like the it's kind of like a like a north star or like that uh, I don't compass to guide something on, yeah. to to always be like okay that Sabbath is gonna help me keep my eyes on Jesus as I continue yeah. to be me like and that alignment to be great yeah yeah you know yeah and I think I think what you just said is really important. This doesn't mean that we can't be ambitious. Yeah. This doesn't mean that we can't be excited about the gifts that God has given us, the vision that God has given us, yeah. the, the desire to drive and work hard and push. Mm-hmm. But what we have to always, like what you said, that North Star yeah. is the constant reminder yeah. that, that God is like, man, Jordan, your work is awesome. Mm-hmm. You're so gifted. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do great things through you. It's going to be big and mm-hmm. awesome. But those things yeah. will never yeah. satisfy you mm-hmm. like my work That's satisfies. It. That's it. Those, that, all that sacrifice mm-hmm. will never make you feel validated yes. like my sacrifice validates you. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the trick. And why is that? Is that because God is like fearful and insecure? Mm-hmm. That he's like, oh no, if Jordan and Alex work really, really hard, they'll find out they don't even need me. Mm-hmm. And then they'll just, oh, they'll become like, no. It's because he knows yeah. that at the end of that road, it's going to be disappointment. Yeah. It's not going to be peace. Yeah. It's going to be sadness and more insecurity. It's not going to be confidence and security in him. That's right, that's right. And, and he doesn't want us to get to the end of that road yeah. and find out that, wow, yeah. it's just been all about me and it's been about nobody else yeah. and I'm still not happy. Yeah, he wants, he, we're his kids, right? He wants us to live the best life. Mm. He wants us to get to the end of our days and find satisfaction yeah. and fulfillment and say, man, life has been great. Yeah. Right? So he gives us that sure. Sabbath every seven days, right? Mm. For the people of Israel. But we know that Jesus calls us to do that every day, yeah. that Sabbath every day, where it's that everyday mindfulness, mindfulness that I love working hard. Yeah. I love being ambitious. I love big vision. I love yeah. drive. I love accomplishment. I love it. Yeah. But those things will never be the satisfaction that I need. Yeah. I love those that. things are, I'm never going to be able to sacrifice so, so, so much mm. that I finally feel secure in my identity. Yeah. That will only come through Christ's sacrifice. Yeah. And I think that that's probably the biggest thing that we all need to reconcile. Yeah. Right. Um, and we need to start living like that, like now instead of waiting until later, yeah. right? Um, and just think about, think about, think about relationally how crappy your relationships are if you really believe that it's all about what you can accomplish on your own. Mm, yeah. think, about, think about how you, the people you're relationally connected to, how they feel, mm. right? It's just all about Jordan. Yeah. It's all about what he, his agenda. His, you know, I was talking to a a a friend of mine that just got married and he's extremely successful in ministry. Mm. I was talking to his wife and um, his wife, this is what she said. She says, I mean, she was an investment banker before. Mm. And she just said, she said, you know, the truth is, is that I knew that I would have to lay this down because no one is going to talk. No one is going to distract from his uh, agenda and his ambition. Mm. So I knew that I would have to lay down my career if we were going to make this work. I just thought about that for a second. I thought about that a few times, like since then, over and over again. I've been like, wow. I'm like, that's so intense. Not again, not that ambition and drive is bad. Yeah. But is it really all about your ambition and drive? Mm-hmm. Is everything all about your gifts yeah. and what you desire to accomplish? Yeah. Or can you realize that you're just playing a part in the bigger plan and purpose yeah. of God for your life that's and right. God's plan for your partner's wife and your yeah. spouse's wife and your friend's wife that's and your so kids' that's lives, yeah. right? How many kids are screwed up because the dad is like, she's Mo, it's all about my vision and my agenda for this family, yep. Yep. right? Totally. Man, that's so unhealthy. It's so dangerous. And if, if Jesus is screaming from the rooftops, don't make this all about you. Yeah. It's going to ruin things. Yeah. It's going to damage your kids. It's going to damage your relationships. Yeah. You have to learn to make this about something bigger than you. You have to realize that it's more about my work than it is about your work. I love that. I love that. And the beautiful thought of that is like when that happens, when Jesus, because you, you said this in, in part, of your, part of this sermon, but sometime like earlier, you talked about how when Jesus when we get the glory or when we do things out of our sense of fulfillment, all that yeah. stuff, you know, a lot of it is self glorification. Yeah. But when there's that inclusion of Jesus in the process, yeah. it's, it's God's glorification. 
And that's the beautiful thing is that then we can't take credit for it. You yeah. know, I mean, even the Bible talks about that. Like God's grace is that it's something that gives to us that we can't take credit for it. It says in Ephesians. And and I think what comes with that is just that it's just there's nothing. It, I'll put it this way. Like there's nothing more God godly to me than I think humility. Yeah. You know, I think when you see this sense of humbleness in people's lives that their life could be chaotic but successful, could be stressful but then peaceful. They, they have emotional capacity, but then they're making so many decisions, you know. To me, I'm like, whenever I see that in some people's lives, I'm always like, man, like, there's something so godly about that. Not because they have everything under control, but because they've, they've really just been like, it's, it's by God's grace alone. Yeah. And as I come to the other side of it, it's still going to be only God's grace that got me through it. Yeah. And, that, and they just have this humility. And it's yeah. like the most, like, it's the most, it's like, like one of the coolest things for me, you know, that I've, I see in people. I've seen God do in my life. Uh, and, and it's, but it's so awesome because it's, yeah, it's not this self-glorified, I did ABCD, this is my leadership plan, this has been like this, like, all that stuff is, is good things, but it's just not God. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And so with that, dude, like, this is the issue, is when you, when you catch on to that, then, then you start to look at your failure and your sin differently. Because mm-hmm. the Apostle Paul says, that he prayed three times for the thorn in his side to be removed. But what did Jesus do? He said, my grace is sufficient for you. So a lot of us have issues. Not a lot. All of us have issues. All of us have issues. All of us have sin issues. It's like people are like, oh, like he he doesn't have sin issues. Or like, I don't like, if if you talk to someone and they're not openly able to talk about their consistent failures, I would be super sketched out by that. Because we all have daily, weekly, monthly failures. We all have huge issues that plague our life. Now, when you understand it's more about God's work and his sacrifice than it is about your work and your sacrifice, when you fall, when you fail, right? It's more about his redemption, his forgiveness, and his grace working in you and through you. If you don't understand that it's about his redemption and his grace, working in you and through you, you're going to try to fix it yourself. You're going to try to sacrifice more, carry more, be more burdened by your own struggle, right? And that is a vicious circle and cycle because to be quite frank, you do not have the power to free yourself from sin. But when you make it about him, instead of making it about you, when you say, yeah, your grace is sufficient for me. I trust your healing power. I trust your work in my life. I trust your work in this area that I'm tempted in or this area that I failed in. Then there's actual hope for real healing and a restoration because you're not looking at you and your own ability. You're really looking at him, right? And we don't find freedom by reciting, proclaiming, memorizing, blank, blank, blank. We find freedom by every time we fail, we go back to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need you. I need your work in my life. Yeah. I need your faith. I need your healing. I need your restoration in this thing. Yeah. Right? And that's the only way forward. So it doesn't matter whether you're addressing failure and sin mm-hmm. or great ambition mm-hmm. and drive and success. It still looks like eyes on Jesus, his work, right. his sacrifice, mm-hmm. his desire. Yeah. That's where the value is. Yeah, that's so good. So like TC family, let's keep that in mind as we're going to wrap up this Uh, commentary today that whatever our sense of religion and and idols that we could have in our life they're just not going to bring satisfaction it will never bring satisfaction but the beautiful thing about the sabbath that the sabbath can't even be an idol either that the sabbath is a moment when we can say hey i want to reflect on jesus i want to get my eyes back on jesus that that my structure the way that i found security in my work and my in my relationships and my jobs and my money and all those things they can't satisfy us, but looking to Jesus, whether it's, whether we are like, it's not, it's looking, not looking at sin or looking at our success. It's just looking at Jesus, finding our security in him and trusting him. Yeah. And so we love you guys and catch us on the next commentary. Bye guys.